Hello Dragonfly Swarm. Ningguang is a 4-star Geo DPS that everyone and their mother is a fan of, if not in gameplay, in character design. And she's being rated up right now on Kazuha and Klee's banners, so as such, I figured today would be a good day to make a guide for her. And I say this because she is deceptively strong. I mean, she requires lots of investment in both herself and in her teammates, and she's not exactly easy to play if you're not playing her strictly as a burst support. But yet, as I continued investing in and learning about her, I noticed I was getting better and better at dealing some seriously massive damage with her. So in this guide, I'm going to discuss everything you need to know about Ningguang as of 2.8 Genshin Impact, including her kit details, her constellations, best artifacts, weapons, and how best to team comp with her. So without further rambling, let's start by taking a look at her very weird kit. Ningguang's attack talent is important, but kinda odd, because unlike most other units in the game, she doesn't have a normal attack combo, she just repeats one singular attack over and over, in which she shoots out two jade thingies towards enemies. And it's important to remember that she shoots two, because although her talent attribute says it deals, for example, 44.8% damage at level 8, it's doing it twice at the same time, so it would actually be about 89% damage per normal attack, but still though, her normal attacks themselves aren't really substantial for anything besides stacking star jades for her charged attack. And star jades are these little floating rocks behind Ningguang's back, and she'll gain one star jade every time a normal attack hits an enemy for a maximum of three star jades at any given time. Upon performing a charged attack, Ningguang will release all the star jades she's holding, and they'll home in on enemies in tandem with the charged attack for potentially massive over overall damage. It's also important to note that with her first ascension passive, anytime Ningguang performs a charge attack with a star jade, that charge attack won't consume stamina. Which is amazing for quality of life as an on-field carry, and actually makes stamina management a non-issue for Ningguang, unlike her other catalyst counterparts. Overall with her attacks, your best combo for Ningguang on the field is generally two normal attacks followed by a charged attack and rinse and repeat. This combo will provide the highest consistent damage, and I would only recommend one normal one charged rinse and repeat if you're in close range of large targets. Moving on to her skill though, Ningguang will summon a giant jade screen that deals a large instance of AoE Geo damage. The screen itself is a construct, so it can be destroyed, but it also blocks enemy projectiles, and with Ningguang's 4th ascension passive, grants a 12% Geo damage bonus when walking through it. Without constellations and on its own, it's a pretty simple ability that provides reliable damage, energy, and that super swag Geo damage buff, but her constellations, as well as her burst passive, do alter the way this ability works, so let's start by discussing how her burst alters it. Ningguang's burst is her most iconic ability, but it's very deceptive in how simple it looks, because you don't want to just toss Ningguang on the field and cast her burst, you have to properly set this burst up for success. The burst on its own shoots out 6 giant gems that each home in on nearby enemies and deal geo damage. However, if you cast the burst while near an active jade screen, it will cause Ningguang to instead launch 12 giant gems, effectively doubling her burst damage. This makes it extremely important to not only always save your burst for when you can set up a jade screen, but also always walk through the jade screen for the geo damage buff before casting Ningguang's burst, because because this will cause the burst to deal significantly more damage than it would on its own. Now, the burst itself does have some weird targeting, and also in AoE situations, its damage is dispersed to multiple enemies, making Ningguang generally very lackluster in multi-target combat, but alternatively makes her ridiculously strong in single-target combat. As for talent leveling priority, if you want to play Ningguang as an on-field DPS, level her normals, then her burst, then her skill. However, if you're leaning more towards a burst DPS Ningguang and she's not C6, you'll usually be better off prioritizing her burst first, then her her skill than her normals. Moving onwards and forward to Ningguang's constellations, it's the weirdest case of hit or miss I've ever seen. Some of her constellations are almost required in order to enjoy her full potential, and other of her constellations are virtually useless, so let's dive in and explain them. At C1, Ningguang's normal attacks now have a small AoE, but when I say small, I mean small. The constellation doesn't do much at all to combat her inherent restrictions in multi-target combat, and even more so than that, her normal attacks don't make up much of her total damage anyways, so it's quite a forgettable constellation. C2, however, is a very good constellation, and it's almost a necessity in order to enjoy Ningguang's potential in a fluid and powerful way. If Ningguang's Jade screen is broken, she gets a free refresh of the skill, and this refresh can occur once every 6 seconds, making her potentially an even better battery and quick swap DPS. But it's also great for main DPS Ningguang not just for the aforementioned reasons, but also because of the higher uptime on her Geo damage bonus from her 4th Ascension passive. You do have to keep in mind though that unlike every other skill reset in the game, if you spam this skill in quick succession, you'll notice Notice it will only generate particles for the first cast. If you want particles from both casts of Jade Screen, you have to wait at least 6 seconds between cast times. C3 is bigger burst damage, which as you can imagine is very enjoyable on Ningguang, not much else to say about it though. C4 is, for all intents and purposes, probably one of the lousiest constellations I've ever seen, and I genuinely don't know who could have thought this was a good idea. Yes, you'll get increased survivability, but it's only elemental damage and it's only 10%. C5 is bigger skill damage and inherited skill HP, which was, was, was once again 
again, very enjoyable. But C6 is very, very strong. Earlier I said Ningguang can only hold three star jades at a time from her normal attacks, which is true, but now at C6, casting her burst will immediately grant her seven star jades for her next charge attack, which is about 556 damage at a level eight normal attack talent. As such, it wildly increases the viability of investing in her normals even as a quick swap DPS because she can do an EQE charge attack combo for absolutely massive DPS in a very short time. It's a great constellation, unlike C4 and C1. And overall, a good amount of older players probably already have C6 Ningguang at this point, but even if you don't, C2 and C3 are still very good for her whilst you wait to collect the final constellation. And although they're all pretty simple constellations, they provide a lot of impactful changes to Ningguang's playstyle, making her overall much, much stronger than she is at C0. Moving on to artifacts, Ningguang is pretty simple to farm for because her best combination is a two-piece Archaic Petra with either a two-piece Attack set or a two-piece Noblesse set to complement the Petra bonus. In general, the two-piece Attack set will provide a wider range of damage bonuses for Ningguang, not only because it's not exclusively burst damage, but also because Ningguang suffers from having a very low base attack, so any attack buffs will have a considerable impact on her damage output. If you happen to have way better substats on your Noblesse pieces though, or if you plan to use Ningguang as a burst DPS, you'll probably enjoy the two-piece Noblesse route a bit more, but just note that it becomes quite a waste of time to keep Ningguang on the field with this combo. Another niche option is to run Ningguang as a pure burst support, in which you can run four-piece Noblesse on her for the extra burst damage, as well as the team-wide attack buff, which she herself will benefit from when casting her burst. But it costs her a 15% geo damage bonus and is generally only suitable in niche situations, so I wouldn't usually recommend this on her. Now, two misconceptions I want to clear are four-piece Retracing Bolide and four-piece Emblem of Severed Fate. Firstly, Retracing Bolide isn't a horrible set on Ningguang and can sometimes compete with the two-piece two-piece combos if the substats are that much better, but in general, I don't recommend going out of your way to farm for this set over a two-piece combination because it would be very resin inefficient and would rarely, if ever, pay off better than the other options. Plus, you would need a strong and consistent shielder to keep the passive up for Ningguang's damage. And as for Emblem, contrary to what I see some people say, it is not optimal for burst swap Ningguang. Ningguang was a character that was already designed to be able to easily spam her burst with low downtime, and Emblem is an artifact set that gains value the more a character requires energy recharge. So considering Ningguang was not designed to need much energy recharge in the first place, there's a very finite ceiling to the amount of damage and value you'll be able to squeeze out of a four-piece Emblem set, even if the substats are super swag and godly. Save the Emblem set for characters that more dramatically enjoy its benefits. Moving on to Ningguang's artifact stats, it's quite straightforward luckily, because you'll pretty much always want to run a Geo Damage Goblet, an Attack Sands, and a Crit Circlet. There aren't really any situations where other main stats will prove competitive with these, so they'll be your best option regardless of which set or playstyle you choose to run with. As for her substats, luckily her burst has a very low cost, so you can generally get away with a low 130% energy recharge, but that could differ depending on how many Geo units are in the party and or how many efficient batteries you have. After your energy needs are met though, focus on building a stable 1 to 2 crit ratio, which can be difficult to do on Ningguang since most of her viable crit weapons are locked behind 5 stars, so I'd say 60 to 120 is a safe minimum. After all of that though, focus almost exclusively into finding attack percent substats because that's really all you'll need left. Given that you can use the artifact strongbox for glads and noblesse pieces, Ningguang is a much easier unit to farm artifacts for nowadays, so it honestly shouldn't be as stressful as it can be for other DPS units. But anyways, moving on to Ningguang best weapons, this is actually a bit of a struggle as a Catalyst user, so I'm gonna discuss her viable options in relatively no particular order, starting with Memory of Dust. Memory of Dust recently had a rate up, so I wanted to discuss why this weapon is not generally Ningguang's best, despite what the math says. So the weapon itself gives a massive amount of attack bonuses, which is great for Ningguang since, like I said, she's desperately in need of attack bonuses to compensate for her low base attack, but the weapon is extremely restrictive for Ningguang's team building and artifact spreads. She becomes becomes less viable with Bennett and requires even heavier emphasis on crit substats, as well as the fact that this weapon causes her to receive diminishing attack stat returns overall. And this is all assuming you compare her with a reliable shielder, which outside of Zhongli would have to be a high investment Toma or Diona, both of which are good, but not great for Ningguang. Unless you consider Toma's C6 buff, in which I'd say he's actually not a bad shield support at all for a sustained Ningguang. So overall, while it's technically one of her best weapons, Memory of Dust isn't one of the best by much, and that's even assuming its highest potential which is a very conditional potential to reach. However, Lost Prayer to the Sacred Winds is another 5-star catalyst that is generally stronger for Ningguang because it provides a large crit rate bonus as well as a ramping on-field elemental damage bonus. So, by that logic, this weapon is 
most suited for Ningguang if you plan on running her as an on-field sustained DPS, but even for a burst DPS Ningguang, it outperforms all of her other weapons except Memory of Dust and one other 5 star, so it's still a great weapon for Ningguang overall, regardless of how you decide to play her. I'd say the counterpart to this weapon is Skyward Atlas, which in terms of sustained DPS damage comes only slightly behind Lost Prayer. It has a reliable attack bonus, and unlike Memory of Dust, this one doesn't easily overcap her attack stat, but it also provides an unconditional elemental damage bonus and a very high base attack, all of which are great for Ningguang. As I said, this weapon is only slightly outmatched by Lost Prayer for a sustained DPS build, but for a burst swap Ningguang, it actually pulls ahead of every other weapon because of its unconditional damage bonuses, becoming her best in slot for that playstyle. Another great weapon for Ningguang though is Kagura's Verity. It comes with a high base attack and a really nice crit damage bonus, plus at C2, Ningguang can quite comfortably take advantage of the full benefits of Kagura's weapon passive, giving her very large skill damage bonuses and elemental damage bonuses, all of which make this weapon respectably competitive with her other top choices. So basically, if you have C2 Ningguang and would heavily benefit from a heavy crit damage bonus, this will be one of your best options. Moving on to the notorious Widzith, this weapon is good on Ningguang, but unfortunately there's always going to be a chance that she gains the elemental mastery buff from the passive instead of one of the other two buffs, which would effectively tank the damage potential of this weapon because Ningguang doesn't make much use of elemental mastery at all. So while even without the passive, it does provide a good crit damage bonus and a decent base attack, it will fall behind some of her other options anytime the passive doesn't work in your favor. However, there are weapons such as Solar Pearl and Black Cliff Agate, both of which provide almost identical uses in that they're best for sustained DPS Ningguang, and they'll both end up dealing comparable damage with one another, so you'll be fine going with either which weapon. Just keep in mind that Black Cliff Agate is a very weird and conditional weapon compared to Solar Pearl, so in terms of practicality, it is far outmatched by Solar Pearl. Dodoko Tales falls in a similar category as the two aforementioned weapons, but it actually situationally becomes her best free-to-play weapon, you just have to keep in mind that it requires you to play Ningguang as a sustained DPS to maximize its weapon passive and keep up with the damage of other catalysts. And while weapons like Eye of Perception, Frostbearer, and Oathsworn Eye are copium but acceptable, the last weapon I felt was worth discussing in detail is Mappa Mare. Mappa Mare is a free-to-play craftable catalyst which at R1 is very bad. <laughs> the weapon has a decent base attack with a completely useless elemental mastery substat, but the weapon and passive provides an elemental damage bonus every time Ningguang triggers Crystallize. And so, while R1 Mappa Mare is quite useless on Ningguang, R5 is a different story. If you don't have any other options and you're willing to spend your precious Catalyst Blaze to run this weapon to R5, the elemental damage bonus becomes high enough to make this weapon competitive with other premium options like R1 Black Cliff Agate and Solar Pearl. So it's by no means her strongest weapon, but it does outperform all other similarly accessible Catalyst weapons when it's at R5. I'd say Hakushin Ring is in a similar boat as Mappa Mare, but it would force you to run Ningguang with Electro units, which shadows Bennett's potential as a large attack buffer, and the elemental damage buff that Hakushin Ring provides isn't as strong as Mappa, so generally it falls short, but my god that was a lot of catalysts. Overall, Ningguang does have solid catalyst weapons to choose from, but her best catalysts are unfortunately 5 stars, and they're quite a bit better than her more accessible options. Still though, she does have respectable free-to-play options that hold their own well, and with proper investment, she'll still be a geodamage powerhouse. Well, with the right teams of course, so let's discuss Ningguang's team comping options. Now, now, as a Geo DPS, much like Noel and Ito, Ningguang suffers from a clear lack of flexibility when it comes to the first half of her teams, partly because she basically requires the use of Geo Resonance, and also partly because in order to comfortably use Geo Resonance, you need a shielder. <laughs> Which means her undisputed best teammate is Zhang Li for his ability to activate Geo Resonance and provide Ningguang with the best shield in the game, as well as a even more resistant shred when enemies are near a shielded Ningguang. The argument is rather simple, if you have Zhang Li, there is literally no universe in which you wouldn't want him with Ningguang, but fortunately there are other options for shielders, such as Toma and Iona. Toma is especially interesting because not only is his shield very underrated and very reliable on a sustained DPS Ningguang, but it also provides some nice personal damage buffs for Ningguang when Toma is at C6, and allows Toma himself to deal some relatively decent damage from off the field while Ningguang dishes her own damage. The only problem with this pairing is that Toma has an absolutely massive energy requirement, and Ningguang isn't really the best at helping to fund that energy to him, so along with another Geo character to activate Geo Resonance, you'll have to use your final character slot on a good energy battery or pyro unit, turning it into a team that might look like, for example, Ningguang, Geo Traveler, Toma, and Bennett. Not a bad team though, since it gives Ningguang a lot of buffs through various means. Your other shielder option is Diona, and weirdly enough, I'm actually inclined to say that Toma is a better option for Ningguang, because while Diona does provide a strong shield, she doesn't provide all that much buffing potential or damage for Ningguang to make use of. So unless your Toma is considerably less invested in than your Diona, or you just love Diona, I'd say she's the less optimal shielder in this specific scenario, but still a very powerful support. Now 
then, aside from shielders, it's also important to pair Ningguang with a Geo unit, assuming your shielder and Geo unit spot isn't occupied by Zhongli, but your options are quite limited. Ito and Noel are both very greedy on-field units, so I would only pair them with Ningguang if she's acting as a quick swap burst TPS. Geo Traveler is a decent battery and sub DPS for Ningguang, but their constructs can prove disrupted to her Jade screen, which is vital to her damage output, so you'll have to work around that issue, but still, Geo Traveler isn't a bad pick for Ningguang. Also, Yunjin is quite bad for Ningguang, because the premise of her kit is to buff the character's normal attacks, and Ningguang's normal attacks play a very small role in her overall damage output, even as a sustained DPS, so there are far better teams to put Yunjin on, even if you're on Copium trying to find a Geo Resonance partner for Ningguang. This unfortunately leaves only two other genuinely valuable Geo units for her outside of Zhongli, the first of which being Albedo. Albedo is a very powerful Geo sub DPS who will provide constant energy to Ningguang as well as very high off-field Geo damage and of course Geo Resonance. And Goro is… a weird one. He is a very good buffer for her, but only when you have three Geo units in your party and or once he hits C6. I'd only typically recommend using Goro with Ningguang if you can also put Albedo or Zhongli with them, because otherwise you'll lose out on Goro's 15% Geo damage buff, which aside from the C6 Geo crit damage bonus is the most valuable thing he can provide to Ningguang. However, if you're extremely copium and you don't have Zhongli or Albedo, I would only really recommend Geo Traveler as your second Geo character as they're the most well-rounded character to provide for Ningguang in most situations. And after you've found a Shielder and a Geo Resonance partner for Ningguang, you've got one more team slot, and when I say this one can be anyone, I mean it can be anyone. Obviously, there are better options than others, but the premise of that comment is that as long as Ningguang has access to Geo Resonance and a Shielder, everything else is up to you. So for example, Bina is amazing in this slot because of the very large attack buff he can provide to Ningguang, allowing her to reach her absolute highest damage ceiling, but also he's an amazing healer and can battery himself pretty well even in an energy hungry team such as Triple Geo. The only thing to note about Bennett is he becomes far less valuable to Ningguang if she's running Memory of Dust, because that weapon's many attack buffs paired with Bennett's own very large attack buff will create diminishing returns for Ningguang. Another great unit for this slot though is Fischl, especially when you consider her A4 passive. Ningguang as well as her teammates will quite enjoy Fischl's high single target damage potential and her great energy battery potential, and personally, I found Double Geo with Fischl to be the most streamlined team of them all, as the rotations were very smooth and constant, which ended up being more effective than Triple Geo Bennett for situations where Ningguang couldn't beat a Spiral Abyss floor in one rotation. But again, you could put basically any sub DPS, buffer, or support in this spot and find decent value for Ningguang. Yilan, Xingqiu, or Shengling could work great in this spot for high sub DPS damage and buffing, Mono could be a good buffer for the slot, Vinti could act as a great crowd controller if you happen to bring Ningguang into multi-target situations, Beidou could provide some decent damage for a sustained DPS Ningguang despite her not constantly using normal attacks, uh, you get it, genuinely a lot of characters can fit in this last spot. But yeah, overall that about sums up my 2.8 Ningguang guide. She's a very fun character and quite unique to play, and I, I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit of a culture shock having to build her and play her at first because I do not play Catalyst DPS units very often, but once you get the hang of her playstyle, she is quite strong. If this video helped you in any way or you enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and also consider joining my Discord server to stay up to date with myself and my community. Alright, I'm gonna go bench Ningguang. She was fun, I swear, but there's a reason I don't play Catalyst users. They're just too slow.